Hello and welcome to Lights, Camera, Privacy, the podcast series that looks some of the most well-known movies and puts it under the data privacy microscope. My name is William Moore and I'm a data privacy associate at Shoesmiths and with me today is privacy advocate and founder of Noib, Max Schrems. In this episode, we'll be looking at the film The Social Network. So welcome, Max. And <laughs> the most important question, have you seen The Social Network? Um, I think I saw it for a couple of minutes on some transatlantic flight and then fell asleep rather, <laughs> rather quickly. So um, not really um, in detail, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those movies which you know, it came out in 2010. It was an exciting movie because obviously Facebook was was everywhere and everyone was talking about it. But uh, I, I watched it back the other day and it's interesting to see 14 years have passed since <laughs> that movie came out and things have changed a lot for Facebook. So one of my first questions is, were you an early adopter of Facebook? Did you set up a, an early account? Um, uh, actually, I had one pretty early because I was um, for an exchange organization I was working for. I was in Malaysia, mm. and back in Austria and in Germany, everybody had StudiVZ, which was like a like local social network. I mean, at the beginning, there were a lot of these like you know kind of national social networks or like in certain geographic regions, and then gradually Facebook took over MySpace in in the U.S. and then kind of all these national smaller things gradually dried out because everybody now had an account at Facebook as well. And it was interesting because I had one earlier because in Malaysia when I was there for that one month, everybody had that thing. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to get an account. And yeah. So when you first raised your complaint from about Facebook in, in 2011 with the, the D, Irish Commissioner DPC, did you think in 2024 you'd be sitting here having sort of become a bit of a, a thorn in the side of... Uh, yeah, if, if I would have known that, I'd probably not have started it. <laughs> um, it's a bit like you think, okay, there is obvious evidence. Um, let's just, you know, give it to the regulator. They will do their job. And then you realize they don't. <laughs> and, and then you gradually kind of, you know, start to say, okay, we, we have to take some action here. And soon enough, you become this kind of um, a bit, you know, Mickey Mouse for privacy, I usually say, um, especially in the German speaking countries that was even, you know, more prominent, like we were like on the front page of a tabloid newspaper within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and as a normal student at the time, that was a bit much. Um, yeah, but then you realize that there's hardly any enforcement, hardly anything done. Um, so there is a role to play to kind of push a bit and see that the laws that we actually have in, in the European Union are at least somewhat complied with. Yeah. I mean, what we really wanted to ask you about is obviously in 2024, you've started to talk about the pay or okay uh, mechanism for uh, advertising. In the film, they talk about, Zuckerberg and Severin talk about the fact that should they bring advertising onto Facebook because it would make <laughs> the site uncool. 2024, here we are, advertising is pretty much all the revenue of, of Facebook and Meta. Do we see a future for advertising as it is on on Facebook, or is this going to be something that you feel like needs to be addressed? I think there's going to be advertising. The big question is, can you track people um, all over the internet for years and years, track every click they do, um, just to have a 0.00 whatever percent more likeliness that someone clicks on a banner? Um, and that feels like extremely disproportionate. Um, so I think there's generally not a problem with having advertisement. What we saw is that in the online space, advertisement became so vast and so also cheap because it's so easy to produce. There's so much advertisement space suddenly um, that it also devalued advertisement and devalued the revenue you can make from it. Um, and it's interesting because in other areas, for example, private TV, we regulate how many minutes of advertisement you can have per hour. We regulate that you have to have neutral, um, for example, in Austria, if you want to have a radio license, you need to do neutral news every full hour. Otherwise, you don't get the radio license. <laughs> um, so there are certain stuff that we have in other areas already, um, must carry rules that you say, okay, if you're a network provider, you must carry the BBC, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I think a lot of that logic we could also apply to social networks to say, why not have a cap of 10% of the stuff on it can be advertisement? Why not say, okay, you must carry somewhat neutral quality um, content as well mm. for free um, because that is your duty, so to say, in our society and, and that's where you basically chip back in. Yeah. And we have a lot of these kind of duties that, you know, as a lawyer, you have to defend people without being paid if they don't have the money to do it. Um, you know, yeah. comes with the job, so to <laughs> say. And I think there would be a lot of... Um, ways of just looking what we already had in other areas to law without reinventing the wheel and saying, oh, it's all different. Um and and go into that direction. That that could balance out a lot of it, especially taking into account that they make insane amounts of money. Yeah. Um there is also this crying that you hear is like, oh my God, but who should pay it? 
Like it's just a matter of being rich, richer, and the richest. <laughs> and, and it's okay if they're just rich. <laughs> I think that that would be fair enough. And do you, do you have any sort of predictions for where Meta and Facebook are going to be in five years? Are we going to see the metaverse take off? Are we going to see that the brand, you know, Facebook is not so popular as an actual mm. platform in Europe. We're seeing sort of the, the, the numbers dropping in that. Do you think that they're going to put their efforts in sort of Instagram or or, or, or the metaverse, as I said, that, you know, that, that could be the future? Um, I'm not a business person, so I don't really know about that. I, I personally, I think the metaverse is probably next Google Glasses or I don't know, whatever we had the last years that were all the big hype. And then a year later, no one talked about it anymore. Um, but fundamentally, what I mean, what you see with a lot of these companies, same thing with Google, is they had a very good core product, and then most of the rest is acquisitions. Most of it is just buying innovation from somewhere else yeah. uh, with the big cash that you already have and the big, the big, um, the deep pockets that you have. And I think that we we can see that with most of these companies gradually. Yeah. I mean, Instagram was bought up, yeah. WhatsApp was bought up, yeah. the core platform wouldn't even you know have them anywhere in the upper ranks of, of online of online services anymore um but it's more of an economic question that as a lawyer don't yeah. think and there's these competition law aspects to that as well as they sort of absolutely dominant yeah no yeah. well you know hopefully we see you uh, uh, make an appearance or your character make an appearance in the social network too because i think there's i hope not i hope not <laughs> i think there's i think there's a chance that you'll make an appearance they do a, a follow-up movie to it but i want to thank you very much for coming probably only in the european version <laughs> yeah you know, edited out of the us one <laughs> Um, but thank you very much for coming on to this podcast series. We really appreciate it. And I know that all the listeners will uh, really enjoy your insight into uh, Meta and Facebook. So thank you very much for coming Thanks on. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.